Hi there, I'm Richard Roberts. What do you do when you face something in your life that needs to be removed? I mean, you know it's not of God and it's got to go. How do you take the scriptures and adapt them to your lives so you can believe God and trust Him? Well, this is something that I began to understand as a little boy. Now, growing up as Earl Roberts' son, of course, my father prayed over me a lot. But something happened to me when I was about 10 years old. I've told the story on television, but it's worth telling again. When I was about 10, I had 22 warts on my left hand. Now, I'm left-handed. And when I was a boy, I played ball. I played baseball, football, basketball. I played every, every sport that you can imagine. And of course, throwing a baseball, throwing a football, holding a bat in my hand, uh, just doing it irritated those growths, those warts on my hand. And I would come home uh, with my hand bleeding. And my mother had enough of it and said, we're gonna to go to the doctor and have them burned off. Well, now this was in the late 1950s and I was a little scared of what they were gonna do. And my dad came home and said, that's fine, Evelyn, but let's also pray. And so he took me in their bedroom and he said, son, sit down here on the bed, I'm gonna pray for you. And he said, I want you to release your faith and expect a miracle. Well, I said, how do you release your faith and how do you expect a miracle? And he pointed to the wall and said, do you see the light switch? Yes. Well, the light switch is a point of contact. I said, what do you mean point of contact? He said, Richard, it has no power, but it's hooked up to the power company. And when you release your faith and you flip that switch, the lights come on. He said, the same thing is true when you pray. And really what he was doing, he was beginning to teach me about Mark 11, 23 and 24. And I didn't realize it because I didn't know that scripture. The scripture says, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And then he prayed for me. And after he prayed, I looked down and every wart was still there. He said, now Richard, we've prayed and believed and we've expected, and now we're going to expect a miracle. Well, the scripture says in Mark 11, 24, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe. I didn't realize my dad was teaching me Mark 11, 24, that when you pray, you believe. You don't wait and believe later. You pray and believe right then. He said, now, Richard, we prayed and believed. And uh, when he said, let your faith go, I said, faith, get up there to God. I didn't realize that I was activating this scripture in Mark 11, 24. He said, when you pray, believe. That's what Jesus said. These are not the words of some man. This is what Jesus said. It's written in red in my Bible what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. In other words, right in the middle of your prayer, believe. Well, as I said, I looked at my hand, every wart was still there. I looked up at my dad and that's when he said, now we've prayed and believed, now let's expect a miracle. I think that's a point where we all sometimes get into a, into a problem because we don't see an instantaneous response. We think, well, God didn't hear us. We think, well, God must be too busy with all kinds of international affairs and he's up there in heaven and he doesn't really know my name. He doesn't know who I am. He doesn't know where I live. A lot of us think that way, but that's not true. Most of the healings that I have seen in my life have not come instantaneously. They have come over a period of time. How many times, I couldn't begin to count the number of times that people will call or will email or will write and say, Richard, I got the beginning of a healing and, and as time went by, the rest of the healing manifested. Well, it starts with praying and believing at the same time and then expecting a miracle. Now, the same thing happened when Lindsay and I entered the healing ministry in 1980. We had only been married a short period of time where she and I came into faith in an agreement on this scripture we asked the Lord for a healing ministry. We believed it was in line with his word. We began to confess it. We prayed and believed at the same time. And then we never asked him again for it. We just thanked him for the healing that was in process and the miracles, I should say, the miracle ministry that was in process. Well, a month passed, two months passed, three months passed, four months, and suddenly people began to get healed wherever I went. And people have gotten healed wherever I've gone ever since. Well, we adapted this scripture into our lives. Now, go back with me. I now I'm 10 years old again, back in the 1950s. My dad had said to me, son, we prayed and believed. Now let's expect a miracle. Well, I went to bed that night. Next morning, they were still there. Second morning, still there. Third morning, still there. Fourth morning, they were still there. Fifth, sixth, seventh morning, still there. But I was still praying and believing. I was expecting. Eighth morning, still there. Ninth morning, still there. But on the 10th morning, 
Why 10? I don't know. On the 10th morning, I awakened, I looked at my hand, and every wart had disappeared. Now, you can see I'm, I, I'm still left-handed, and there's not one row. The, the wart started right here at the end of my finger and went all the way down my fingers, all the way down into the palm of my hand, and circled back up my thumb. And they were completely gone. Well, I began to learn about this scripture. I began to learn what things soever you desire. Well, what thing did I desire? I desired for the warts to go. The Bible says, when I, well, what things soever I desire, when I pray, believe. At the precise moment that I pray, I also believe. Well, that's what my father had said. We've prayed and believed. Now let's expect a miracle. And as I said, uh, most of the miracles that I've experienced and that I have seen have come after a period of time. Why? I, I, I can't explain. I don't know it. Perhaps God is building my faith. Perhaps God is building our faith. I don't know. I just know that most of the miracles that I have seen have not been instantaneous. Now, I have seen instantaneous miracles, but most of the miracles I have seen have come over a period of time. But that period of time can be discouraging if we let it. Satan will come in and he'll say, do you really believe that God heard your prayer? Don't you know that God is too busy out there? He doesn't really care about you. Well, you need to remember that the devil is a liar and he's the father of lies. The truth is not in him. The Bible says in John 10, 10, that he comes but for to steal and to kill and destroy. So we understand he's a thief, he's a liar, he's the devil, he's not your friend and he's not gonna give it to you straight. He's gonna pervert it and change it and try to get you to disbelieve God. But you tell the devil, no, I will not entertain this thought. I have prayed and believed and now I'm expecting a miracle. Well, each morning I looked and they were still there, but I didn't lose my faith. Each morning, morning after morning, I looked and I looked and I looked and on the 10th morning, everyone was gone. And you can see my left hand, my, that finger, my, my palm of my hand, my thumb, just as clear as it was on that 10th morning. Never had another growth, not another wart on that left hand. And I'm able to do whatever I want to with my left hand. Uh, it doesn't bleed because there's, there's nothing on there for it to bleed from. But more than that, I learned how to pray and believe at the same time and to expect a miracle. Now, what do you need in your life? Is it spiritual? Is it physical? Is it financial? Is it in your body? Uh, your, is it in your mind? Is it in your emotions? Is it in your family? Is it in your business or on your job or in your ministry or is it in some other area of your life? Jesus said, when you pray, believe. Now, I'm gonna pray that kind of prayer like my dad prayed over me when I was 10 years old because I learned it. It's in me now and I want to pray it over you. So whatever it is, let's take it to the Lord right now. Take your burdens, the Bible says, to the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray over you. Whatever the situation is, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And I command the devil, this dirty, rotten, stinking devil, to take his hands off of your life. I rebuke that in Jesus' name, and I pray for you to be healed in every area of your life. And as I pray, I believe. And as I pray, I want you to believe. Say this out loud. Father, in Jesus' name, I agree with Richard's prayer and I believe. And I'm not coming out of this agreement. In the name of Jesus. Now friend, expect a miracle. That's a phrase that my dad began to say when I was a little boy. Expect a miracle. What a great phrase. Expect a a miracle. We prayed and believed. Now let's expect a miracle. And I release my faith with you. And I am not coming out of this prayer of agreement. I'm believing in Jesus name for that healing to be manifested. Now it took 10 days for those warts to be gone. And when Lindsay and I prayed and believed God for a healing ministry, it took four months, but it came and it's here now. And so I give my best to you in prayer and I believe God and I'm expecting a miracle for you. Now, I'd like to know what's going on, so email me. Send me your prayer request, oralroberts.com slash prayer. Oral Roberts, just go to oralroberts.com slash prayer. In Jesus' name, I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching us on YouTube. We have a special offer available for you. Just click on the link in the description for your free download.
Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications. We'll see you next time here at Richard Roberts ORM.